I'm gonna show you an easy way to take your design from this to this. This is called a line halftone and we can do it horizontal, we can do it vertical, we can do it diagonal, and we can even do it wavy and curved. It only takes a few minutes and a few layers to do this effect and it's a real nice way, an easy way to spice up your work. What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jerome with JeromeSupply.com and I'm here to help you design smarter, not harder. Let's get into it. Here's how to make this custom wavy lined halftone effect in Photoshop. In a 300 DPI document, drag in your image of choice. Or of course, if you're doing this on a poster or a full design, you can just follow all the steps that I'm gonna do and place all the layers that I'm gonna make at the top of your document. This is a poster I made for fun for the song Silver Springs by Fleetwood Mac. Great song. I'm gonna be creating that effect for all these images at once and basically doing it on top of this entire poster. So I'm in my 300 DPI document. What now? Now we actually need to make a new document. So go to Command N on your keyboard and let's make a new document. It needs to be eight pixels by eight pixels and the resolution at 72. Let's create that document, zoom all the way in here. And here's where we're gonna make our line patterns. And you might be familiar with this technique already if you watched this video, uh, but we're gonna be expanding on that a bit. So let's go ahead and take our rectangle tool. We're gonna start off by making that vertical line pattern. So in the middle of your document, just go ahead and drag out a line. Let's make it two pixels wide and drag that into the center of our document. Then duplicate this rectangle layer with Command or Control J. Go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Just go ahead and convert this to a small object. And now set the Gaussian Blur amount to two. And let's actually duplicate that Blur layer with Command J to get that effect a little bit more intense. Now quickly go back to the original rectangle layer. Double click the layer to bring up the layer styles. Let's add a color overlay, and we just want the color to be sort of an off black. So let's set it to about a 24% black, as you can see here. The brightness value is 24%. Let's keep it at that. We'll press OK on both of these. Now click on the top layer of this document and do Command, Option, Shift, E on your keyboard. That's going to require both hands. And if you're on Windows, I believe it's Control, Alt, Shift, E. But anyway, this is going to create a merge duplicate of all of our layers. Now do Command or Control A on your keyboard to select the entire canvas and go to the Patterns dialog, which if you don't have open, that's in Window, and then Patterns all the way down here. I'm gonna bring this up here so y'all can see it better. So in the Patterns dialog and with our whole document selected, go ahead and click on this plus icon at the bottom of the panel. And this is going to create a new pattern from our selection. We're just gonna name this one Vertical Line. Press OK on that. And now that line pattern shows up as one of our patterns. And now we can go back to the document where we want this effect to take place. And on top of all the elements in my design, which I have in this group here, I'm gonna create a new blank layer and then just click on that pattern that we just created. And that's gonna fill our canvas with that pattern. Pattern. It looks just like gray right now, but if we zoom in, we can see that that's actually the pattern we just created. It's just so small that from a distance, it looks this gray. So we wanna bring up the size of that pattern quite a bit. So double click on that pattern fill layer and let's just change the scale to about four or 500. I'm going with four here. We'll press okay on that. And now just by setting this layer to the blending mode hard mix, we already have that really cool lined halftone dither going on across our entire poster here. But there are a few other layers that you might wanna add. So right below the pattern fill layer, let's go ahead and add a black and white adjustment layer and just drag that below the pattern fill layer. This just makes sure that there's no color beneath that layer because otherwise it's going to sort of hard mix the color and create some unpleasant colors that you don't want. Now on top of that pattern fill layer, let's go ahead and add a threshold adjustment layer, make sure that's on top of the pattern fill layer. This isn't gonna do anything initially, but say you wanna adjust the intensity of this pattern. Now you can go on the pattern fill layer and just move the fill percentage up or down to change the intensity of that pattern. And make sure you're changing the fill of this pattern layer and not the opacity because the fill affects the contrast blending modes a bit differently. And this is hard mix, which is a contrast blending mode. And fill is going to be the one you wanna to use to adjust the intensity of this. So even 100% is pretty cool. We could bring this down to I don't know, 50%, that's also a pretty cool look. And on top of this, you could throw on something like a gradient map to add some color in there and some texture to bring it to life. And so we're not quite done yet, but check out this before and after of the poster, before the dither and the coloring and the texture. And here is after the dithering, the color and the texture. Really, really cool. Now, what about all the cool variations of this pattern that I mentioned earlier, like the diagonal and horizontal line patterns? Well, since we've got a vertical line pattern, Realistically, all you have to do is rotate it by 90 degrees to get a horizontal line pattern. And similarly with the diagonal line pattern, just rotate it by 45 degrees. And Photoshop actually makes that very simple for us. So all we have to do is go into the pattern fill layer, 
double click that and we can choose the angle of this pattern. So if I wanted this to be horizontal, I just type 90 in this box here. And now we have that horizontal line pattern going across our poster, giving us that horizontal sort of scan line together, which is really cool. Or if we want this to be diagonal, we could set this to 45 degrees. And if you want to go in the opposite direction, just make that a negative 45 degrees. So that's awesome. You could change the angle of your pattern, the angle of that line halftone, and even change the scale as well back in the scale box if you wanted that to be a bit smaller. And of course, you could change the intensity of this pattern by adjusting the fill percentage over here. Now, what about that wavy distorted line halftone that I mentioned earlier? So we actually cannot do that with just the angle setting in the pattern fill layer, we got to take a few more steps. So with the angle on pretty much whatever you want, but I'm going to choose 45 or negative 45 here because I like how the curvy wavy halftones turn out with the diagonal halftones. But of course, you can experiment with other angles here. So I'm going to keep this on negative 45. I'm going to turn the fill of this all the way up to 100%. Then I'll duplicate this pattern fill layer with command J, hide the original one. And on this duplicate layer, we're going to turn that into a smart object. So right click, convert to smart object. Fair warning, that might take a little bit of a toll on your computer, but it is worth it. So now on this smart object, let's go ahead and add a Gaussian blur. So go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're just going to blur this by about one pixel. You can even do two. I mean, it's just depends on the kind of look you want. I'm going to stick with one here for a sharper effect. Then let's add another filter. And this one's actually going to be liquify. So you can see where we're going here. Go up to filter and then choose liquify. And now in the liquify panel, you can make pretty much whatever you know, sort of bends and distortion and waves you want using the, you know, liquify tool. So with the liquify brush, simply just drag around the canvas here and create all sorts of cool wavy distorted pieces of this line halftone pattern. You can mess with the pressure of the brush over here to get more of an intense effect. You see, if I turn this all the way up, my brush sort of has more of a kick and more power to it. If I turn this down, I like keeping it around 40 or so, then I get to have a little bit more leeway with um, how much my brush does in, in terms of distorting this pattern. So yeah, now just paint pretty much whatever you want. You can make pretty much infinite combinations of you know different waves and distortions. And so, you know, you could simply just brush around in a random manner, or maybe you have a sort of certain contour that you want to follow according to the poster or the image. Um, you know, you could experiment with that. Just make sure that as long as you're liquefying, you don't have any transparent areas. So if I liquefy a little bit too much here, we have that transparent uh, pixel overlay coming out. We don't want that. So we're going to, you know, bring that, put that back uh, or sweep that under the carpet real quick. Cool. So now with our fully liquefied pattern, let's press OK on this. As you can see, we now have that really wavy, distorted halftone feel all across this poster. And now for the final step, just go ahead and slap on another bit of a Gaussian blur in this. So go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur this by one to two pixels, just in case you have some pretty harsh areas within those lines where those lines are sort of more, I don't know the word for this. What's the more, more, more pattern, the more pattern. You don't want the lines to be doing that. So go ahead and add a blur of this radius two or one, two or three. Um, you could again, experiment with that and see which best fits the style that you're going for. I'm just going to hit it with a blur of two pixels. And we're pretty much done here. And this is also now a setup that you don't really have to recreate. You could just drag this onto whatever other poster or image that you want the effect on. So if I just select all these layers here and drag it onto a different document, like this random photo that I have lined up here, it's going to duplicate all those layers and create that same effect on this document. This is a smaller document, so the effect seems larger. You can experiment with the scale, obviously. And if I size the pattern fill layer down here, we get that effect at a smaller scale. So that's something to play with. You can also throw a levels adjustment right above your image or your design and mess with the levels to get more of an intense effect or just play with the brightness of it overall. All right, y'all, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make that line halftone effect. As always, I love to see how you use these tutorials in your own designs. So go ahead and tag me in any post you make with this effect at Duran Studio on Instagram. I'll be stoked to see that you got something out of this tutorial. And if you did, leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel because I post these videos every week to help you become a better designer. So I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.